Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this nice and sunny day and the best possible car for this weather. In this episode I'm driving the refreshed Mazda MX-5 slash Miata. The Mazda MX-5 is currently in its fourth generation and this model is almost a decade out. And I recall when it first came out it looked very different from the previous generations. Those squinting angry looking headlights were a bit odd for the Mazda but the design kind of grew on me and now with almost 10 years old it's a very very good looking car that has aged, that has aged very well. Um, for the current model year Mazda had made some upchains in the lineup there are now three standard lineups the prime line the exclusive line and the Homura and there are two special editions the Kazari and this one the Kazuna. I'm going to get in detail on this model later on in this video, but first I want to walk you around the car. And let's start with a peek under the hood. One of the key changes Mazda made for the lineup is that the 1.5 engine is now available with all trim levels. Only when you choose the automatic gearbox you need to select the 2 liter 2. Uh, that's a combination you can't make with a 1.5. Anyway, this 1.5 has a bore of 74.5 millimeters and a stroke of 85.8 millimeters. So it's a quite an under square engine and that translates into the engine characteristics as having a lot of low down torque, relatively a lot of low down torque. Torque peaks at 4500 rpm with 145 newton meters and the maximum power output is 132 horsepower at almost 7000 rpm. Um, those are, it's a relatively high revving engine for an under square engine, but when you drive it, and I'll get into that in the drive segment, you can tell it has very nice engine tuning and great engine characteristics. In this car, the engine is made it to a very nice shifting manual six speed gearbox. I like it a lot. It's a close ratio gearbox with short gears get into detail on that too in the drive segment and overall we have a peak in this engine bay yeah, it's, it's a typical Japanese setup here I look at the front axle it's about here so it's almost a midship engine you can see here are the strut towers and the engine is all the way to the back it has a large valve cover but it's a relatively short engine this is about how tall the engine block is it sits nice in between the axles and we have a peak over here. You have a line going through the firewall for induction noises and it makes a very nice induction sound, especially in the lower rev range. On the higher rev range, the exhaust note takes over. So it's, you'll always have a nice sound no matter what you drive when the top down or the top up. It sounds great, this engine. Now let's close up a hood and let's have a peek in the small trunk. I'm not ashamed to admit that at first I couldn't find a trunk release. I was looking for a small button and I opened it with a remote control every time. But the trunk release is hidden down here, just above the license plate. Well, this is very small, 130 liters. Um, it's a two passenger car and when you're going for a weekend away, you can take enough luggage. It is fairly deep, I'm touching the bottom right now. I can toss my camera equipment in and haul a little bit of groceries but that's all but that's what you may expect we won't judge this car for its practical capabilities so let's close this up now as you may expect ingress and egress um, it's a bit difficult uh, because the car is very low you have to get used to it but your hips get supple after a week driving it and when you don't have supple hips this is not a car for you anyway this kizuna edition comes with this very nice white nappa leather and the Interior, well, it's all typical Mazda. Yes, it's small. The window is fairly upright. I've driven another convertible. This is actually the first MX-5 I drive in 300 car tests. And I have only tested one convertible before. That was a Nissan 360, no, the 370Z. Pardon. And that was a very powerful car. 320 horsepower. A lot of wind noise. And that car was really exhausting to drive. It was so eager to go fast. There was a lot of wind noise. And after that I thought, well, convertibles, eh, they're not for me. This car, however, I love it. Um, okay, I digress. Back to the interior. The instrument cluster and the climate control is all typical Mazdas. Um, you have this older style Mazda infotainment system, but I like it very much. It's a small screen, works nice with this controller. 
Um, yeah, it isn't as, as sophisticated as the other models, but I've mentioned this many times before in tests, I don't like screens that much. And uh, the only system I like better is Mazda's newer widescreen system uh, that they tucked uh, closer to the window. So when you take your eyes off the road and you look towards the screen, your eyes don't have to focus and to adjust. I like that very much. But in all in all for this car, it's more about simplicity. This works really well. This version has an upgraded Bose audio system. I believe it has nine speakers. There are speakers in the headrest too. Uh, but when you're driving this car with the top down, um, there are wind noises and with the top up on highway speeds, well, yeah, wind noises and surrounding noises take over. So it's nice to have that upgraded audio, but you don't hear a lot of it in reality. This one has climate control. It has heated front seats, a nice small steering wheel. Well, there are buttons very self-explanatory. It's the older generation Mazda steering wheel, but it works really well. Getting the top up and down, let me show you. It's fairly simple. Just pull this lever, pull it down, and that's it. It's just one hand operation. Click it down and top is open. The front suspension of the MX-5 is all aluminum. Double wishbones, all aluminum. The hub is full aluminum. Uh, this version has 16 inch wheels and the standard brakes. The Homura, I believe, comes with, yeah, it's the Homura trim level, comes with Brembo brakes and Bilstein shock absorbers and springs. It also has Ricardo seats. It has either race wheels or BBS wheels. There's a lot of big brands on that car. It really is a sporty version. This Kazuna, however, comes with these nice, I would say it's a dark chrome painted 16 inch wheels they're wrapped in yokohama advanced sports in size 195.50 um, they're not the widest tires but they work really well for this car and this suspension it has a lot of suspension travel i'll get back to the suspension in the drive segment because i have a small remark about that but these tires this wheel size work really well for this car one thing that i also like is this color the kizuna comes with a blue uh, hardtop that's exclusive to the kizuna and this very nice dark blue color not sure what it's called midnight blue or dark crystal blue either one of those i'll blink it in in direct sunlight you can see nice bright sparkles and in artificial light when it's parked out under a street lantern it looks very nice on darker overcast weather it looks almost black but it's a real vibrant and lively color and together with the white napa leather these chrome wheels and the blue heart up makes this a very chic car and that's the response i get oh that's a hundred thousand dollar car well it isn't it's half that and it's still very expensive but nevertheless that's the response i get to this car it's a very chic almost i would say posh car well folks the weather is way too nice to be standing here and talk um, let's head out for the drive are you coming with me first thing I want to talk about is the liveliness of this smaller engine option. Say with 132 horsepower it's on the lower side. How much driving pleasure you can have with this smaller engine. It's also down to the gearbox with great clickety-clack short throw gear shifts. It's close ratio and even in the lower rev range the engine has plenty of torque. You have plenty of pull. You can drive in fourth gear in a residential area at 30 kilometers an hour and tiptoe across it and tiptoe through the neighborhood. But then you wind it out to over 5,000 RPM in fourth gear. You're doing way over 100 kilometers an hour. And the engine has a nice pull from low down. Uh, even around the 1,000 RPM mark uh, in every gear, the car pulls great. When I picked up the car, it it just had over a thousand kilometers on the odometer so it was just barely run in and i have been taking it easy with this car it's still just around the two and a half thousand kilometer mark so don't want to thrash it which i also never do with any test car 
but when I drove the car for the first 100 kilometers, I had to take a highway at just normal highway speeds in fifth and sixth gears. And I could start to overtake a truck, an 80 wheeler, just from 80 kilometers an hour in sixth gear and step on the accelerator a little bit and there's a nice linear acceleration. It's doing that fairly well, We're currently in fourth gear, fifth gear, revs ju just dropped 500 RPM, 60 kilometers an hour. And I have the idea that I'm already starting to speed, but this is just within the speed limits and I'm having loads of fun. So the usability of the engine, the engine characteristics, the torque curve and power curve are very nice. Um, you don't have to fear when you're in a tight corner in second gear and you floor the accelerator that the back will do a power slide. It just doesn't have the power for that and I think it's a good thing. Also if you opt for a 2 liter version with 184 horsepower, you have to step on it real hard to make the tail slide of the car to make it rotate on the power. Uh, it's just not the car for that. The MX-5 has never been about power, fast accelerations. It's always been about maximizing horsepowers and turning gallons into smiles per gallon, so to speak. Now we're doing 60 kilometers an hour and there's a long turn here. You can tell there is some body roll and I want to touch upon the suspension car you have a low center of gravity and it's a relatively wide car in comparison to its length so of course handling is great but there is more body roll than I expected and now we're approaching a speed bump here fourth gear there's a lot of suspension travel and I am very pleased to see how this car handles uh, speed bumps and like that also when you have joints in the highway or sudden bumps or small potholes suspension handles that great. I expected the car to be much more stiff than it actually is. Oh, there's a lorry on coming. I'm going to get way here. I seem to suffer a little bit from bump steer and I experienced that in road like this where they have a speed bump in a curve and when I approached the curve and the wheel compressed you could feel the left front wheel, it was a right hand turn, uh, turn in a bit more and when the suspension fully extended after I left the bump in the rebound it changed a bit, it, it unsettled the car a bit. I think we're approaching a section here where we have a speed bump mid-corner how to get rid of motorcyclists I always say steer in with a corner now on the rebound you saw the car shock that's where you have bump steer I didn't expect the car to have that and I'm not sure if any other ND5 MX-5 owners are watching this video what are your experience with that please let me know down below in the comments I think I've mentioned this before in the Toyota Yaris and the Toyota Yaris Cross videos how well a well-tuned suspension works out for lower horsepower cars um, both those cars the suspension setup was a bit sportier than in the regular models but it didn't affect the all-day driving comfort and it really aided to the driving pleasure and it's the same with this car much more than in those Toyotas I must admit um, this car is so much fun to drive with 132 horsepower I've never driven the 2 liter Skyactiv-G version of the MX-5 but after having driven this I think this one is perfect for me um, I wouldn't even consider the 2 liter at this moment listen to that engine induction noise, exhaust noise 5000 rpm We may or may not have broken the speed limit, limit just there, but it's when you can tell that the wind speed is taking up. Um, yesterday I was driving on the highway with my daughter. She wanted to drive the top with the top down. The entire drive was fine with me. We had a stretch of highway, but above the 100 kilometer mark, the wind noise takes over and you have to raise the voice to speak. Now in true master tradition, the MX-5 has a floor mounted throttle pedal, accelerator pedal, however you want to call it. I like it really much and the brake pedal, accelerator pedal are well laid out for heeling and towing during downshifts. 
it's always a small shock. Um, th there is no rev hang, so the engine drops very easily in revs. But on downshifts, I wish it had a, it would rev a bit quicker. And that's why I said it would be nice to have a synchro rev function like the Nissan's, eh? the, the manual shifter 370Z I just referred to. That would really add to the driving experience. Like I said, pedal position for healing and towing is alright, but it's just hard to rev match on the downshifts. There's a small room for improvement, that's my only main critique on this car. Now, with that being said, let's wrap up this driving segment and let's head out to the middle of nowhere where I'll give you my final thoughts on the updated Mazda MX-5. Well folks, as per usual, we have landed in the middle of nowhere but I'm gonna wrap up this real life car review. Well, to be honest with you, I love this car. The first day I drove this car with the top down, it immediately landed in a second spot on my top three of favorite test cars. Number one is the Nissan GTR with track pack. And if you want to know what number three is, let me know down below in the comments and I can do a video about that if you'd like to see. Anyway, having the 1.5 Sky Active G engine available throughout the entire lineup with exception of the automatic gearbox versions I think is a pro for the MX-5. This engine offers a lot of driving pleasure and you don't trade in a lot of power and performance to be honest. Over the 100 km an hour mark as I pointed out you can tell that's where the 1.5 legs behind the 2 liter Sky Active G but all in all this car is made for calm driving and enjoying yourself to the limit. The remarks I had on the front suspension and the bump steer and the body roll there is, uh, it's not too bad. If you want to track that car or if you're really sporty driver you can opt for the Homura version where you get the suspension upgrades and all of that can't forget about. When I talk about prices, prices over here in the Netherlands start at around the 40,000 euro mark for the prime line and this Kizuna version together with the Kazari has the same price at around 45,000 euros. I'll bring in the exact price over here in screen. And I think this is a drop dead gorgeous car. The white interior and the blue exterior paint with the blue soft top, like I said in the introduction, makes it a beautiful car. And I have really really enjoyed myself. Now, like I said, the prices over here are high because we are tax to death when your car isn't about fuel economy or electric. Um, there are hardly any provisions for fuel economy. There is no hybridization and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. There is a start-stop system which I turn off most of the times. But nevertheless I get great fuel economy. After almost 1500 kilometers of driving my average fuel consumption is 5.6 liters per 100 kilometer. That's much better than I expected. Well, for now I'd like to thank you for watching. If you like these real life car reviews, let me know down below in the comments. Please consider subscribing to the channel, put on notifications, give me a like. It really helps me out and it inspires me to make new videos. Um, for now I would like to thank you for watching and almost say bye bye, but um, I think I'll go for another drive. I'm having way too much fun with this car. See you on the next one, folks. Bye-bye.